In the last few videos, we've been talking about this normal physiological hemo hemostasis. And we've talked about the cell wall and how the cell wall contributes to hemostasis. Now we're going to talk about platelets. How do platelets contribute to hemostasis? When you have a blood vessel here, and you have um, normal endothelial cells here on the outside, and you have you have you know stuff flowing down the pipe. You have red blood cells. You have white blood cells. Then you have little platelets. And in normal, when this normal endothelium is intact and everything is going fine, these plate these platelets are inert. They don't really do much. Um, but when this platelet when this endothelium gets damaged and there starts to be there starts to be problems, well then the platelets become activated. So we're going to talk about that. The platelets have two they have receptors on them. The platelets have little receptors and they have they have uh, granules. They have goodies inside of them. So what are those goodies? Well, there's two types of granules inside of these platelets. And inside these granules are the goodies. The alpha granulins, granules, they contain fibrinogen, fibronectin, factors 5 and factors 8. And these are involved in the coagulation cascade, and we're going to talk about that next. Then they have the platelet factor 4, which is a heparin binding chemokine. They have platelet-derived growth factor, which helps in uh, the reestablishment or you know these cells in extracellular matrix to proliferate, and we've talked about that in previous videos. And they have the transforming growth factor alpha, which also helps in in the growth or the uh, rebuilding of a damaged tissue. They have these gamma granulins, or they're called dense bodies. They contain adenine nucleotides, ADP and ATP. They, they contain ionized calcium, histamine, serotonin, and epinephrine. So as these cells, you know, if this cell dies out, gets damaged somehow, platelets first have to adhere. So there's kind of like three steps in which the platelets uh, participate. The first step is uh, platelet adhesion. And this process we've already discussed, but you have Van Wilderbun factor and that is it, that's on the extracellular matrix. Here's the extracellular matrix. It's in the extracellular matrix and it helps the the platelets bind to that. If you didn't have this factor, this Van Willebrand's factor, the platelets might bind to it, but there's so much shear force there's so much shear force, shear force, because of the blood flowing that it will rip the platelets off of these this extracellular matrix. But once you have this von Wildebrand's factor there, then these platelets are securely um, attached to this extracellular matrix, and they overcome this shear force by the blood flowing and pushing down the pipe. So the first step is platelet adhesion, and von Wildebrand factor is the is the crucial factor involved in that. The second step is secretion and that's where these come in. These alpha granulins and these gamma granulins. Is, um, they release these, these factors, these certain types of factors that are involved in the cascade. And we've already talked about how thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin which helps kind of collect these platelets where to cover up this hole in the in the blood vessel and we'll talk some more about these other ones here in a second and the third one is plate lit aggregation so these platelets aggregate or accumulate here and ADP right here is a very potent um, stimulus for these other platelets to gather around. So once this first once you first get some, you know, these original platelets here, 
you first get two original platelets binding through this von Wildrand factor, then they start re releasing these granules, and ADP is the most common <clears throat> one. And then other, you know, other platelets as they're passing by will start you know attaching 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 more to these original ones so platelets play a big factor in you know converting this original injury to a kind of a plug that will that will stabilize stabilize this damaged tissue so once you have this adp being released from these gamma granule granules of these platelets what that adp does scroll down here a little bit so what that ADB does is is it changes these GB2B and GP3A receptors on platelets these are on platelets so these receptors are on platelets so once this ADP starts releasing from these granules, these gamma gram granules, then those receptors, the G, these GP receptors on these platelets start changing to allow them to bind to fibrinogen. And fibrinogen is also being collected on this, this plug here. As these um, platelets start binding and they start accumulating here where this plug is, they, ch they, they start fusing their membranes and there's a term that's called metamor metamorphosis. So metamorphosis, viscous metamorphosis, and they start fusing, and they just become this big viscous mass here. So they 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 stop being individual platelets, and they start becoming this viscous metamorphosis, or this viscous mass. And let me show you a picture here. So this picture here is uh, taken from Robin's Basic Basic Pathology Eighth Edition, and it shows these um, these the, kind of this process that we've been describing here. So under this endothelium, when you have a hole here, under this subendothelium or the extracellular matrix, you have von Wildebrand factor. I love saying that's like German or something, but um, you have this this factor here and you have these receptors on these platelets and they you know they the first one this GP1B receptor is responsible for binding to this von Wildebrand factor which will then start this process you know then they'll start secreting these secreting granules you know those granules that we talked about and then the ADP will start making a conformational change on these other complexes that cause them to bind to fibrinogen. Okay, and then now they start accumulating, start accumulating, and then this fibrinogen is changed to fibrin through the, the uh, molecule thrombin, and we'll talk about that in the uh, coagulation cascade. But there's some diseases here. So if you had genetic diseases, genetic disorders that inhibit, that you, you don't make this factor, for example, in von, uh, the deficiency in von Wildebrand's disease is you don't have this factor. So then you have a, a coagulation. Uh, we'll talk about these blood, these bleeding disorders later, but just kind of a, a hint or a, you know something to think about. If you don't have a bunch of these factors, well then there's syndromes or there's diseases that are associated with that. And that's kind of how we know about this. Um, but so this von Wildebrand's disease is where you don't have this von Wildebrand factor. This Bernard Solier syndrome is where you don't have you don't have this receptor. And then this Glanzman thrombasthenia is you have this complex here that you, that you don't have. So all of these disorders are bleeding disorders and it's because you don't have these factors in this process of platelet aggregation, platelet secretion and this 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 platelet ag, um, conglomerate of, of platelets here to stop this bleeding, this plug. So that wraps it up for platelets. We'll see you in the next video when we talk about the coagulation cascade.